Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a tutorial. I'm going to show you how to bring a song into OnSong using OnSong Console instead of tip tap typing it on your iPad, which can be kind of a pain in the butt. So before we get into this, there's a couple of things you need. Clearly, you need an iPad. You need OnSong. Um, if you want to use advanced MIDI features, you'll probably want a, a more recent iPad. And due to some of the problems between um, iOS and the Mac OS, you might need to be in the beta program for iOS 11 and the most recent version of the Mac OS, um, which is High Sierra. It wasn't until I switched to these that I was actually able to get the two um, devices to connect together via Wi-Fi and actually through a USB cable now. Aside from that, if you can get the uh, the iPad and your Mac connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you can use console to edit your OnSong files. You don't need to worry about any of that other uh, upgrade or beta program stuff. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up OnSong, uh, making sure that both the Mac and the iPad are connected to the same network. Otherwise, I won't be able to access this because OnSong console is... Um, accessed through a URL in your browser. Um, and so I'll show you how that works. So the first thing you have to do after you've gotten them both connected to the network is open up on song. And it's going to open to the last song you are on. Don't worry about that. So the song I'm going to enter into on song is by Citizens and Saints. Uh, music by Zach Bowen and Brian Eichelberger, and the song's called Hail the King. When you put a song into OnSong, there are a lot of things you need to consider in advance, so it helps you to plan this out rather than just you know going through and, and just plain old putting the song in. One of the first things you want to think of is anytime you put a song in OnSong, you want to write it in OnSong in the key that the song was written originally because you'll be able to transpose the song once it's in the system, and it would be easier just to be on that level. Um, if you need to capo it, you can do that. If you need to transpose it, you can do that. Um, so now that I've got my iPad open here to OnSong, I'm going to show you on the iPad under Settings, which is the little gear here, um, there's this thing called Console. In order to know how to get to the console from your browser, you can tap on that and it will give you a web address, this address right here. So if you go over to your browser and you type in this address, http colon 192.168.1.15 colon, this is port 5076, it's going to open up the OnSong console, which is going to give you a backdoor text editor, pretty advanced text editor, to edit your songs and organize your songs. So that's the first step to getting going on this. Now, I don't think I have this song in here. If I search for Hail the King, nope, I don't. So we're going to create a new song. And I'll need some things. I need the I need to know what the chords are, so probably need to, you know, research the song and go through it and transcribe it. Um, or I can just find it online somehow and um, save myself some time. Naturally, you're going to have to verify that everything is correct because there are a lot of sites that a lot of musicians out there that don't get the the cording uh, the chord charts right but if you click this plus sign right here it gives you a new songs palette where we can type in hail the king uh, i've already done this once um, and the artist is citizens and saints and create on song now we need to continue filling out this information because it's important the key that the song is written in is c so we're going to choose C. Um, the tempo is 4-4. Um, we don't need to worry about number or keywords. These are, you know, that's extra data that you can put in. This is all metadata that's used to fill out the, the, um, the details on the on-song sheet. The duration of the song is going to affect how the iPad scrolls if you have it in auto-scroll mode. So if the page is extra long, and one thing you can consider when you create these song sheets is that you don't have to worry about the size of the page. Normally when you have this on, printed out on a page, either you're going to have two columns to make up for the, for the added space, 
or you're going to end up with one long column and you're going to have multiple pages. And then you're going to be giving your musicians multiple pages, which can get lost or, you know, it could be confusing. It could just be a pain in the butt when you're in the middle of playing a song to have to s turn the page or shift papers around. It's very distracting. So uh, OnSong allows you to do a continuous scrolling from top to bottom, and the song could essentially be as long as you want. But the time of the song determines how slow or how fast that scrolling moves once you start the song. Um, it's not always needed. If you have MIDI triggers that are triggering sections to change in the middle of the song to that section, then you don't necessarily need to have scrolling, but it is a nice feature. You do have to get used to the idea of playing music while the page is moving, so you'll have to learn that process, but um, it's really not that, that tough. So the next field down here is flow. Flow is extremely important. Flow lays out the order in which the song occurs. You'll notice here, this is where we're going to type our song, right here in the middle. And it's essentially going to be a, a, a database. It's a repository of sections. When you type chorus and you type the chorus in, you only need to do it once. You don't need to do it three times, four times. You don't need to type out the song like it's played. All you need to do is type out the sections of the song. And then you give it a flow. And the flow is what determines how the song is played and what order the sections are played in. So the first thing you want to do is you know, take a look at the song we're looking at. And we're looking at Hail the King, right? And we have it set up in our set um, such that it's, uh, it goes like this. We have uh, intro, comma, V1. This is for verse 1. Then we have a chorus. And then we have verse 2. Then refrain, then bridge, and then refrain twice. So that basically lays out the flow of the song, and you can see it automatically puts it up here. Uh, now I can get to actually creating the sections. So I can close my metadata palette unless I need to still fill out this information. So maybe I do the CCLI number is 6534383. Oops, I can't learn how to type. 6534383. And that will be displayed on the page. And this will also be displayed on an overhead projector. OK, so let's close this. And now we want to open up the Insert tool here. Click on this palette. And this will give us the ability to quickly create our sections. So we now we have Intro, Verse 1. So we're going to do Intro. And we're not doing this in the order of the song. You'll notice when I clicked Intro, it recognized where that needs to go. Intro, we're, we're going to put a verse 1. Let's see, this has two verses, so verse 1 and verse 2. This has a chorus. This has a bridge. And it has a refrain. Now, refrain's not an option here, but that's OK, because we can just go ahead and type it in. And anything you put a colon after is treated as a heading. And it will correspond. This first letter corresponds to this. There's other ways of typing this. This could be typed out completely as intro. And you'll notice it still picks it up. Intro, intro. The minute I take away that O away, it doesn't know what this is. So INTR it puts it there. It's very confused. It won't display what's in the intro section. So if I type something in here, something in here, you'll notice it doesn't show up on the page until I have a heading that matches. Okay. Now, it could be I for the first letter. Or it could be the whole thing. The only time you would want to do the whole word is if you have chorus one, chorus two, chorus three, such uh, that you would need to target a specific section. OK, so we've got intro, verse one, verse two, chorus, bridge, refrain. Now, all I have to do is uh, head over here to wherever you want to go. Find it online. You don't need to retype this out unless you are uh, in the mood to really type. And I'm just going to drop this below here. Um, I don't need these headings that came over from that site. But we have been justified, our faith by his love. So that's the first verse. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put it under verse 1. Okay? And I'm gonna, then I'm going to remove it from down here. Because right now it's thinking that this is the part of the refrain. 
Okay, praise the Savior, he has won. This is the chorus. So we'll copy this and we'll put it under chorus. And then we'll remove that. A lot of times I'll be typing this out manually. Uh, verse 2, copy that, stick it under verse 2. And then delete. Okay, so in this there are chorus 1 and chorus 2. And according to according to their song, uh, according to their chord chart, there's not a chorus two. There's just a chorus. So we are going to remove that. That is actually we rejoice. That is actually the refrain. So you can see somebody got it wrong. Um, that's okay. There's not usually really a wrong and right, but if you keep it the way they wrote it to begin with, then you can modify it afterwards. But Keeping an original version would be a good idea. So chorus one, praise the Savior. Well, we've already got that. We don't need chorus one. We've already got a chorus. The bridge. Yep, so that's the bridge. And we'll put this between bridge and refrain. Take this out. And then we can delete this, this. We can delete this. That's all gone. Now, the refrain, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have deleted the refrain, but I'll just type it up. Uh, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, the refrain in our version uh, says this three times. And on our normal sheets, to save space on paper, we would put something like 3x. Um, we don't want that necessarily because we have unlimited space. We can actually type the text in the way it, it actually plays out. Uh, we rejoice in the glory of God. Yep, and then the last line of the refrain is, we rejoice in the glory of God. Okay, so I think we have everything but the intro. Um, how these are organized is going to make a difference in the future, but uh, why is that misspelled? Okay. Oh, because there's some sort of weird character in there. Okay, the way these are laid out will affect how they're displayed on the projector. So we have to consider that in, in the future. Um, and you, mi you might want to set these up um, so that they fit. Every section in here, every paragraph, every break in the paragraph like that will create a new slide for the overhead projector. Um, Okay, so on to the basics of the chords. Since we've got our song set up here, verse one, chorus, intro, verse one, chorus, right? Verse two, refrain, bridge, refrain, refrain. And that's pretty much how the song goes. And that's how we've got it laid out. Oh, we're missing a chorus. Let's see, we have intro, verse two, chorus, verse two, intro, ver I'm sorry, intro, verse one, chorus, verse two, Refrain, bridge, chorus, two times refrain. Refrain, bridge, chorus. So there needs to be a chorus in here. Two times refrain. Okay, so you can see that anytime you add the section into the flow, it adds it to the, to the song sheet. You don't have to retype the entire thing. Okay, so let's work on the chords here. Uh, the original song is written in C, and we've got that key of C. You can see up here, key of C, 4-4. Four, four. The intro, we play the chorus chords uh, for the intro. So that's C, G, E minor, and D. And we do that twice. So rather than typing it, copy and paste it. Now we've got that in there twice. And then we go straight into the verse. And if we use the insert tool here, we can click on these chords here to uh, enter them into the, to the verse. So we have been justified by faith through Jesus Christ. There's a G here. And then on stand, there's a D. And then we're back to the same pattern. C, C, G and D, okay? And then we just continue doing that.
Okay, so we've given all of our sections chords. And essentially, if the flow is correct here, we are done. And when I click Save, that's saved directly to the iPad. And if I click Lead, the iPad will, let me switch songs here, Hail the King, yep, the iPad loads up, and we see all of the sections correctly. Okay, good. So this song is basically ready to perform and can be broadcast to the projectors and can be broadcast to stage monitors. HDMI TV is using an HDMI splitter. Okay, so now that the song has been put into OnSong, we can use this song for projection of the lyrics overhead. On the iPad, there's a button that I can click that will allow me to preview what it will look like, and you can see that here. Okay, what you've got here is the overhead projector. It shows the copyright of the song, the rights and licensing, all that good stuff. It's got, um, you'll see on the iPad, as I scroll to the top of the song, when I click on the title, everything goes away on the screen. When I click on the intro, there's nothing on the screen. If I click the intro chords, there's nothing on the screen. And you can see as I click that, the song moves up. These are all trigger points that can be used with external MIDI, uh, foot controller or Ableton Live or anything that automates MIDI. And if I click verse, nothing comes up. But the minute I click on the section with the text, you'll see that it only displays the text. It doesn't display all the chords, which is great because that allows you to divide it up. The only thing you do see on here is that there may, ma may, may be a flow to the song that doesn't match the actual song that you need the congregation to experience. And so you might want to split this up into sections. And now, when I save that, these sections will change. So if I hit, we have been justified by faith through Jesus Christ, that's the first section. You can see that it's highlighted here. Then I can move down and it'll fade to that. And so however you want to lay the song out is completely up to you. Um, but you can do it uh, very customizable, and it will still you know, appear on your uh, song sheet in a usable format. Jumps down to Praise the Savior is one. That's the chorus. Then maybe down to the next verse. We haven't edited this yet, so it throws the entire verse up there. But if we divided this up, we're going to see that these will all change. And now I can go to the chorus, and it will have just the two lines and the two lines there. And so we can switch through these in time with the song. Uh, whoops. And uh, this song is basically ready to perform. Outside of um, any programming that you might have to do to trigger MIDI, um, and actually set up the external controls for MIDI, uh, we're, we're ready to go. So if that helped you out, if that helped you understand how to put a song into OnSong using console, leave a comment, give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll keep putting more videos like this up um, as long as they are good enough for you. All right, thanks. Bye.